Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. When we take a look at the flow processing pipeline here in our view model of use case number one, you can see that at the top we have our initial flow, the latest stock list flow that we get from the stock price data source, and then some operators are applied on it. In the previous lecture, we already covered the lifecycle operators on start and on completion. There, you learned that these operators are only called once at a certain point within the life cycle of the flow. We also already talked about terminal operators, which are located at the very end of a flow processing pipeline. No code of a cold flow is executed unless such a terminal operator is applied on a flow. Besides lifecycle operators and terminal operators, there is also another category of operators, which are called intermediate operators. These intermediate operators are executed for every emission of the flow and return a new and transformed flow. We are already using such an intermediate operator in our view model here, and this is the map operator. In our code here, map is applied on a flow of stocks. So it takes a stock list, maps it to a UI state, and then returns a transformed flow that emits UI states. In this lecture, we are now going to have a look at some of the most common intermediate flow operators. Some will be familiar to you, since they also exist as collection processing operators. I already created a new file in our playground that's called one underline map.kt. And in there, I created a new suspending main function in which a new flow is created. And in the collect lambda, we simply print out the collected values. The operator that we're already using, map, is pretty straightforward. We can apply it on our flow of integer values here. And we can, for instance, multiply every received value by 10. When we now execute this code, you can see that map is executed whenever it receives a new emission from the upstream flow. And therefore, in the collect lambda block, we receive the result of the initial values, which got multiplied by 10. So in the console, we can see that 1 multiplied by 10 is 10, 2 multiplied by 10 is 20, and so on. The returned flow of map can emit a different type than the origin flow on which map is applied. Therefore, we are not limited on only returning integer values, but we could also return other types, like string, for instance. So we could return a string with the value emission and then a value. And as you can see as a hint in Android Studio, collect will now receive string values. And when we run this code again, you can now see that the strings are collected and printed out. So now we get emission one, emission two, and so on. As you can see, a common use case for the map operator is to convert an object into an object of another type. A very good resource that illustrates the behavior of different flow operators is flowmarbles.com. On this website, you can switch between different operators on the right-hand side. So if we take 
a look at the map operator, for instance, you can see that we have a nice diagram with these colored marbles. Every marble at the top represents an emission of the original flow. So emissions of the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Below you can see the operator that is applied to the origin flow. In our case this is the map operator and to map the following block is passed where every emission is multiplied by 10. Finally at the bottom every marble here represents the emission of the flow that the map operator returns. So for the emission 1 of the original flow, the resulting flow returns 10. If you have a hard time understanding a certain flow operator, I would suggest that you open up flowmarble.com and play around with the operator. It's also worth mentioning that you can move the marbles of the origin flow and by moving the marbles to the left or to the right, you can see that we can change the time when the emission of the origin flow happens. But let's go back to Android Studio now. Besides map, there's also the map not null operator. This operator not only maps a certain emission, but also filters out null results. So map not null will never return a nullable type. Another simple intermediate operator is filter. So let's copy the current file and paste it here as two underline filter. And then instead of map not null, let's use filter. For filter, we can now pass a predicate. For instance, we can say that every element needs to be bigger than three. And the filter operator now filters out every emission where the predicate is not true. So collect will only receive emissions that are greater than three. So if we execute this code here, you can see in the output that indeed only four and five is collected and both values are greater than three. Another option would be to use filter not. And what filter not is doing is that it filters out all emissions where the given predicate is true. And what filter not is doing is that basically it only returns emissions where the predicate is actually false. So when we run the code again, you can see that we only receive emissions where this predicate is false. So only emissions where emission greater than three is false. Another variant of the filter operator is filter not null. Filter not null returns a flow that contains only values of the original flow that are not null. The last filter variant that I'm going to show you is filter is instance. Here we can filter for certain types, for in our case, let's say integer and filter is instance will now filter out every emission that is not of the type integer. In our case, since the origin flow only returns integers, this operator here will filter out basically nothing. But in cases where you have a flow that emits different types, filter is instance is, can be very useful there. The next two operators are called size limiting operators. And the first one that I want to discuss is called take. So let's create a new file and call it three take and instead of filter is instance we use take and as you can see for take we can pass a count parameter 
So here we could pass, for instance, three. And what take now does is that it cancels the execution of the flow when this passed count limit is reached. So take will return a flow that takes only three emissions of the origin flow. So when we run this small code example here, you will see that indeed only three emissions are taken and basically forwarded to the collect lambda. A small variation is take while, where we can pass a predicate. So let's again pass the predicate where it is bigger than three. And what this will do is basically does the same as count, but with this take while we can pass a predicate and are basically much more flexible. So we can define a much more sophisticated logic here than just taking a certain number of emissions. Hmm, that's strange, nothing is printed out. So as you can see, I made a small mistake. I defined basically that emissions should be taken as long the emissions are bigger than three. And since the first emission is already smaller than three, then the flow already got canceled and therefore we have no output. So if we say now, as long as it is smaller than three and execute the app again, then it should work properly. And yeah, indeed, both emissions that are smaller than three got printed out and then the flow was canceled. Now you might wonder what's actually the difference between take while and filter. The big difference is that filter does not cancel the upstream flow. Filter will just take a look at the emissions that it receives and filter the emissions accordingly. On the other hand, for take while, once the predicate is false, the upstream flow will be canceled and no more emissions will be forwarded. The other size limiting operator is drop. So let's create a new file for drop. And instead of take, we can now use drop. And again, here we can pass a count parameter. And when we here specify three and execute this code, you can see that drop basically drops out the first three emissions. So one, two, and three. And only after the first three emissions, the return flow will emit all subsequent values. So in our case, four and five. One common use case for drop is to use drop with the count value of one. And in this case, you're basically not interested of the first value of the initial value, but you're only interested in all subsequent values. Similar to take while, there is also drop while. And similar to take while, you can pass a predicate here and here we can say, as long as the emission is smaller than two, we want to drop each emission. So when we execute this app, for every emission where this predicate is true, so for one, this emission will be dropped. So because one is smaller than two, one will be dropped and is not printed out but two smaller than two is actually false. And therefore two is forwarded and printed out and also the same for three, four and five. The next operator is the transform operator. For transform, we can pass a transform block, but the big difference here compared to map is that as you can see in the Android Studio hint for transform, we have a flow collector as a receiver. And this means that we can call emit here in the transform block. 
And here we could, for instance, emit the received value times 10. And when we execute this code, you can see that we now get every value of the origin flow times 10. You might now wonder what's the big difference between transform and map, because with map we had basically the same result. But the big difference is that we can not only emit a single value for each value that we receive, but multiple values. For example, we can emit the unmodified received value and then the received value times 10. And when we execute this snippet again, you can see that the original value is printed out, then the original value times 10, then number two, so the unmodified value two, and then the modified value two times 20 and so on. Another intermediate operator is with index. So let's create a new file, six with index. Instead of transform, let's now use with index. And with index returns a flow that wraps each element into an indexed value type. So if we execute the with index example, you will see that the indexed value object is printed out. And as you can see, the indexed value object contains the index and the actual value of the emission. Last but not least, we have the intermediate operator distinct until change. So let's create a new file distinct until change. and use it here. And what this operator now does is that it filters out values in situations where the previously received emission has the same value. So for example, when we have emissions of the same value here, like one and one, and we execute this code, then you can see that the second equal emission, the second subsequent equal emission will be filtered out. So instead of two one values, we have only one one value. And as you can see in the end, if the one comes at a later point, so if it's not a subsequent, a direct subsequent emission, then it will be forwarded anyway. So yeah, distinct until change is also an operator that is very useful. All right, now we covered all of the most common intermediate operators. An exercise is waiting for you in the next lecture where you can play around with these operators by yourself. So have fun. So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock live tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description and I would love to have you on board.